Equipment does matter, in my opinion, and you should get the best equipment possible. But more important than that is just if you master the equipment that you have currently, it's going to help you further down the line. Because the principles of like lighting and sound and everything like that are the same when you're using a nice microphone and a nice camera than they are when you're using an iPhone. All right, guys. Our 10th chat here with Ben Hillman. Uh, ben, thank you so much for joining us here to talk about video. And first question to you is how are you guys using video in general um, at, the, at your company? Sure thing. Yeah, thanks for having me on, you guys. Um, so we're using video primarily for uh, reach and as well as expanding our email list. Uh, we have a couple of different shows that we're working on, uh, some going currently, some depending on when this is released, you might hear about, you might not, um, where those shows are specific audiences with specific email lists that we're hitting them up. Um, but additionally, we also value putting our videos out on social, whether that's different trailers for the shows or our creative that we put behind for our product launches and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, just kind of a holistic way we're using. Mm -hmm. and which channels, which channels are you developing right now then actively for, for a pushing video? Of course. Yeah. Uh, so we're developing, I mean, when we post stuff on the social, we're trying to um, boost our social profiles from Twitter or LinkedIn. Uh, we also, if it's like, for example, Protect the Hustle is the podcast that I've been working on for like five years now. That has its own email list that we're developing there, um, as well as the podcast, you know, downloads and folks that only listen via the podcast apps. Pricing Page Teardown has its own email list. Uh, we have a show that's coming out soon, Turning Point. Uh, I'll, that's the name of the show, uh, but you can find out more about that later. And that's also an email list as well that we're developing. But without each... Each show typically has some sort of social first component that we include as well. And where are you seeing biggest gains with from all the series that you guys are doing on the video front? What performs or maybe surprises you in, in the way that it actually performed? Yeah, it's. Uh, I wouldn't say it's super surprising. I mean, we do put out little, you know, like social clips, like uh, for in interview clips where it's like highlights from the episodes. Uh, they do about as well as you'd think they'd do from getting the attention of typically the folks that were involved in the interview. And, you know, especially when they have something really, you know, a good nugget of wisdom to say, those do well. But more often than not, I'd say 99% of the time, the videos that do the best are the ones that have some sort of creative push behind them. Um, some examples include uh, we had our space campaign video where we, you know, sent a rocket up to space and put a lot of creative behind that. And like the story itself was very well put together. Uh, and that did really well. Um, just so happened to time out with the um, space, the, the balloons that were going around like the US and the world and whatnot. So we got lucky there. Uh, but other examples, like we launched our show Boxed Out and we did an ASMR style um, commercial for the show. And that was shared a lot over, you know, throughout social because there was a lot of like, it was a creative way to do it instead of just like, we have a new show called Blank. Uh, and then last, there was a show, uh, commercial that I did, and I would say the trailer probably did better than the show did as a whole, but it was for our show Retention Talk, where I made a horror short where we it was released in like October, I think it was on Friday the 13th or something like that. And um, it was, yeah, there was a lot of creative that was put behind it uh, instead of just like, here's a show we have. Um, so long answer, but yeah, that's the gist of it. Of course. Creative, creative always, always uh, is is the core component. Uh, ben, in before we get to you, Joe, uh, in terms of games, what does it mean to you? What are you looking for from a performance perspective? What matters beyond likes, comments, or it is maybe likes and comments and reshares? Sure, I mean, it may be, it may surprise you to say that we don't really have a target number that we are shooting for from like an audience perspective. I think it's something we're you know constantly thinking about, like what's the best thing to track. But really, the best thing to track isn't really something that's trackable, and that's resonance. Is this actually resonating with folks, uh, which you can kind of see through just, is it being shared on social? Like, if you're scrolling through, if, if I'm scrolling through my feed and I see a lot of reposts of that space campaign video, that's going to tell us that video is doing really well. Like, we're getting a lot of that sort of qualitative feedback, but it's like qualitative mixed with the quantitative. Of course, it's going to 
you know, I see when we uh, relaunched Protect the Hustle earlier this year, that first episode had like a lot of views. And that's like, okay, great. Like people actually paid attention to this. And then being able to see what that trail off sort of is, is like how many people are actually sticking around. Um, so retention and resonance, I guess, are the two things that I'm putting forward there where it's like, are we actually getting people to stick around and watch the videos or listen to the podcast? Like our podcast doesn't do crazy numbers, but our retention, I would say, is pretty good from like getting people to continue to come back and listen as well. In terms of in terms of like production, production level, right, for the different shows and different videos that you're doing, I know you've kind of got like a, a full spectrum, I guess, from probably from like Protect the Hustle being like kind of like an audio only, you know, podcast that I suspect you do on probably like River, something like the Riverside, um, all the way to you know, some of your top shows or kind of top videos where like the production level is super high. How do you think about like production level? And like when you're, I guess, creating a new show, creating a new format, where, how do you decide how high that production investment should be? Um, yeah. Yeah, no, I get you there. Um, it, it, it starts in the concepting phase. I mean, I don't think there's any idea that we've had for a show that has start like there's no inception of just like, oh, like this show we're going to do. It usually starts with like, for example, right now I'm working on a show that will be coming out uh, in April. I think that's this month that this will go live uh, where it's like we want to make a show for SaaS CFOs. Um, so it starts there, but then we have to figure out, okay, what does that look like? And so that goes through a whole process of like, you know, going just pretend like budget doesn't uh, isn't available. Pretend like, you know, the sky's the limit. Disney is a great example here of when they're designing a new theme park ride, they have the blue sky phase where it's like, pretend like budget and physics don't exist and design the best experience possible. And then from there, you kind of like bring it back into reality once you have the like, well, it'd be really cool if this existed. Uh, and so it may sound silly to do that for like a podcast, like Protect the Hustle or the CFO podcast that I'm working on right now. But if you start from that, like, well, what's the idealistic view of this and then bring it back? you land somewhere pretty interesting. So it's not really like, hey, we're going to do this show in a studio. Hey, we're going to do this one remote. It's you start with the idea first and then just kind of reel it in uh, to reality once you can. And and how do you, in, in that concepting phase, how do you kind of land on an idea that, that you know, that you think is going to resonate with that audience, right? Like how do you, I guess, make sure that it's an idea that's going to hit with CFOs in SaaS? Totally. It goes through a... a just feedback, 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 feedback. Um, I mm. think that there are, it's really easy to do feedback wrong, where I think if you're doing, if you're giving feedback on something or if you're receiving feedback on something, if the person who is en enacting the feedback, like actually, you know, taking that feedback and putting forward like the action on changing the brand or changing the style or whatever, um, if that person doesn't have the power to say yes or no to feedback, that's when it gets really tricky. Because um, then you're just a cog in a machine and you're not actually, you know, internalizing that feedback. It's feedback is a conversation. So like, I'll create a show, I'll make a pilot, like a very, you know, crappy, minimal version of just me talking to the camera, pretending to be both myself and the CFO. And then someone's gonna give me feedback on that and be like, you know, there's a creative leap that you have to make of like, okay, I have to pretend like this isn't actually, you know, Ben, this is just the fake CFO here. Uh, but I have to be enabled to enact that feedback. And if I'm just being told what to do, like that's not going to work. Uh, so it has to be like a lot of conversations and just like really just pouring over it and trying to see it from different pr perspectives. But ultimately, if I don't believe in what I'm making, we're not going to make something interesting. Mm -hmm. And for that, like for that, I guess the like the pilot episode do you like do you do you do you ship that out to an audience? Would you ship that out to an audience of CFOs and like kind of get their reaction? How does that pilot process work? I'm just curious. Yeah, it 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 depends on, and it's something that we're constantly working on. Like we're iterating on the process itself, um, but we will absolutely send it out to like a red team. Um, and for those who don't know, like a red team meaning like folks that have not haven't seen any important point of the development mm -hmm. and are getting yeah. completely fresh eyes on the concept, because uh, ultimately that's going to be helpful. Like a uh, very small example. I just sent the logo to our CMO, uh, Andrew Davies. And he offered me a really like, like I thought the logo is awesome. Um, we're definitely going to go forward with it, but he gave me some really good feedback on, 
you know, when you put this on like a podcast app, how are people going to know it's about like CFOs in SaaS specifically? Because the logo itself doesn't mention CFOs, doesn't mention SaaS. If I just go in and I change that and say it like make the logo say SaaS and CFO, it's probably going to be an ugly logo. Like it's it's valid feedback considering the context of what you're seeing. So instead, what I did was it's like, okay, I'm not going to change the logo, but perhaps the positioning of it, like in the title, you know, can put a little bracket at the end there of like uh, for SaaS CFOs, like just making it clear of what it's for. Because that the, the feedback that I got there illuminated that perspective that I didn't consider, but just changing it to be exactly what that person was saying is completely missing the point of the feedback itself. Yeah, no, that completely makes sense. One one more quick before I pass it back over to Sergey. Um, I spoke with Dan, um, uh, I think probably about maybe a year ago now um, on your team um, about and we a part of the discussion that we had, we were talking about um, YouTube versus kind of other video hosting platforms. And I think at the time you guys up until that point had been quite heavy on non YouTube, basically, I think like Wistia and using, you know, to host the shows. Have you got like a strong opinion on, on YouTube hosting or, you know, I know you guys, it looks like particularly on the paddle channel, like you're investing more heavily in YouTube now is what are your general thoughts on, on video hosting? And, and where videos should be held. My thought is that people are going to watch and people want to be on the content or on the platform that they want to be on. Where if I make something for YouTube, if I just, you know, upload a bunch of like protect the hustle, for example, we used to do a video component to it and we're bringing that back as well. Uh, but if I just upload a bunch of like highlight clips, we know that that works for like, you know, things like, you know, Joe Rogan or, or other like podcast clips where it's like, chunks of the episode like that definitely works but uh that's not that doesn't really work exactly for our podcast we we can't just you know upload short little clips that are the whole point of them is to get you to watch the podcast i think that whatever platform you're uploading to you have to make sure that the audience member is getting the most out of the the thing that they're seeing on that platform and that it's not just a promotional piece to go and consume it somewhere else we all want like to fill our email lists and to like offboard from this this platform that we're lent, uh, renting from. I get that. But like you have to think more about is someone actually getting the most out of what I'm seeing right now? On platform. Instead of, yeah, on platform. Yeah. So yeah. that's my thought there. Got it. Got it. Makes sense. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's okay. Let's roll it. On to the short answers. Are we ready for that? I am ready. Which one's the first one? Uh, just so I can make sure. Uh, just a short, uh, short answers, short questions. Uh, there's only four and they get progressively harder. So if we, if they happen to be a little difficult, we can always skip and move on. And okay. maybe I have a prop back. for one of them. I don't know which one you're going to ask. But... <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's, uh, let, let's try it out. Let's try it out. Ben, if you could only do marketing through video in your company, what would you do? Uh, I think that's a tricky question because that's, that is what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> I am a full-time, you know, video maker. Uh, but if you're talking about the, talking about like the company as a whole, yeah. uh, do what we're doing right now, making shows for specific audiences. What is, what was one of the most worthwhile investments into video that you've ever made? That's the prop. Uh, this is a shotgun microphone that I bought with my friends when I was in middle school. Uh, over 15 years ago and I just I used it for the production of our show verticals uh, I still use it to this day it still works uh, yeah buy if you buy expensive things hopefully the whole point of them being expensive is that they will last and the brand yeah. and the brand yeah what's the brand of the mic oh oh yeah yes yeah. that would be helpful uh, it is an asden asden microphone uh, I don't remember the yeah. model number, but S- oh, SGM two X. So shout out to Asdem. They are not giving me any money. Yeah, I love, love we love quality gear too. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing about it. It has to be said. Um, if you were making video content five years ago with uh, with everything that you know now, what would you advise younger self? And five years ago, that would be like 2017, 2018. Yeah, that was uh, right when I started at Propwell. Um Just put it out there. Just put out, you know, ship, 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 ship. Uh, it's going to be crappy. 
you're going to make some stuff that you're like, I really wish I didn't make that. But you, there is no better advice that you can give yourself than just learning from your mistakes. Uh, like a lot of people say on YouTube, put a hundred videos, then don't don't care about any of them and see what happens. And then, but after, learn learn uh, from it though. Like you know, you're not just putting it out just to do it. Like you 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 want to actually take something from that. Definitely. Now this is a the one that we had a mixed response. Uh, Peter Thiel question: What do you believe about video that other people might find insane? Uh, it's somewhat related to what we've talked about before. I think equipment does matter. Um, I understand that not everyone can afford the best possible equipment, but use the tool that you have to the best of your ability and learn how to get better with that tool. And when you can, like when the time is right, and that time, in my opinion, is like once you've mastered the thing that you're using right now, upgrade to the next thing and then learn how to use that tool. Because, and I know this is supposed to be a short answer, but the uh, the reason that I believe that is that the reason that we emphasize like really good microphones and really good cameras isn't just to like look cool. It's so that you can be as clear as possible when you're delivering your message. If I'm delivering you a message right now and hopefully I have calibrated my microphone correctly and everything like that. But if it sounds like echoey or if it sounds like crackly or something like that, you're not going to listen to what I'm saying. If my background like is all like busy and whatever. You're not going to be focused on what I'm saying. So equipment does matter, in my opinion, and you should get the best equipment possible. But more important than that is just if you master the equipment that you have currently, it's going to help you further down the line because the principles of like lighting and sound and everything like that are the same when you're using a nice microphone or a nice camera than they are when you're using an iPhone. The last one, what's your biggest challenge with video content, creating video content? Uh, I don't have enough hands uh, <laughs> and I, yeah, I don't, I have a lot of ideas and I don't, I don't say that like um, boastfully. I just am constantly thinking about like different ways I can do like the amount of fake podcasts I've created in my head or fake video series that I've made, whether it's out about from anything from like, oh, I should make like public transportation videos. Or I remember there was an idea I had on like, what if I built a company that made the videos for airline safety uh like videos you know that you see before you get on a plane stuff like that like and i'd love i want to do all of them and and that's like my constant battle is that it's like fuck what do i focus on it's a very quick final one ben um you've 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 obviously i guess up until now been very focused on like long form shows so you know sh uh, shows podcasts are you guys doing anything on like the kind of shorts front obviously shorts has you know exploded as a medium over the last Stay 12 months tuned. so Oh, like exclusives. Yes. Any 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 uh, exclusives or no exclusives? Yes, we are working on shorts, uh, and you will see them. And yes, Paddle does have a TikTok, I think. Uh, so you will see that uh, shortly. Got it. Awesome, Ben. That was uh, that was awesome. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, of course. Great. Thank you so much, Ben.